Right then, this is what we call the loop rig. You know, we use this rig. You can use it with either big hooks. You know, you haven't got to use small hooks for scratching a bait. You know, you could use it with, you know, up to size photos if you wanted. But, uh, you know, I tend to use this rig more for my flat fish fishing and things like that. Like, so I like to use it with, like, sizes, hooks from size 4, maybe up to, say, a size 2 -o. Anyway, we start at the bottom, as always, with the leg clip. Using a proper leg clip with a bait holder on, like, you know, I find is a, a bit of a necessity with this loop rig. So, we use my favourite uh, my favorite knot, which is the free turn grinner. That's the leg clip tied onto the bottom, right? So, with this one, you know, we're going to... Well, we're just going to do it exactly the same as the last one, say 15, 16 inches. Would you say that's about right, though? Yeah. Yeah. Snip. Right, get that stuff out of the way. So there it is. Right, now to the bottom. Right, we've tied our we've tied our leg clip on, right? Now what we need to do now is we need to slide everything on from the top, right? So we start off with a crimp. Little copper crimp slides down to the bottom. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know, close up any of the crimps until right at the end. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slide everything on the rig, you know, and then once everything's on and I've tied the top link on, then I'll position everything and I'll, I'll crimp it down into place with either a pair of pliers or my teeth, you know. Right, so anyway, copper crimp. Then we just want one of these big beads. It have not got to be massive, like as long as as long as they hold your swivel in place, right? So copper crimp to a bead. Then we slide on a swivel, which sits on top of that bead. Then another bead. And then a crimp. Now basically, that's the uh, that's the bottom half of the rig, not including the snood. Bit that's that's done. You know, obviously, that's the first part. You trap that swivel in between two beads in your crimps. Your crimps are there to keep it all there, right? So now I'm gonna put the rest of the stuff on before we start crimping everything in place, right? So secondly, we go with another crimp. Now this is going to be to obviously anchor the top half of the rig in place. So your rig body goes through the crimp again. Just slide it down for now, out of the way, just to uh, just where you get everything on. Then then we need to use a small bead, right? Now the reason I'm going to use this small bead is that I've got to slide the spring on after that, and I don't want the spring to be going inside any of the bigger beads. So these smaller ones. They just stop the spring from getting jammed inside the bead. So one goes. Is yeah. Let me just show you the top half of the ring now. So we you've seen the bottom half. We got a copper crimp now, the small bead, and the SRT spring. Right. Then we put another small bead on. Always use the smaller beads either side of your springs, just to stop your springs getting wedged inside them, like I said. So another small bead then on top of the spring. Then a bigger bead. This is now for trapping your swivel. So there's your bigger bead. Then your swivel goes on. Then your big bead again to hold your swivel in place. Then just for luck, we put a small one on the top. You haven't got to really, because everything gets pulled down on the rig, but I think it just makes it look tidy. And then your last copper crimp. Right, 
And basically that's it. That's all your components slid on that need to be slid on, except for obviously this this link clip, which obviously connects it to your main line. So I'll just tie that on quickly. Nice little beehive with the tag end coming out the top of the nut. So now my brother's got to trim the tag end nice and tight. Oh, I tell you what, that Leatherman. Beautiful. So anyway, that's everything slid down to the bottom. Now we're just going to crimp it all in position. Right, so I get the top half of the rig. So basically, get that out of the way. Now, with this bottom crimp, I don't want it too close because I, I need, when I put the snood on, I need the hook to be able to come down and grip hold of this leg clip, right? So I come about inch and a half, two inches up from the leg clip. And I just crimp our down in position with a set of pliers. You haven't got to go mend all with it. You don't want to be crushing them down so hard that it's damaging your line, you know. Anyway, that's, that's crimp number one in place. That crimp's not going anywhere now that he's been crushed down. These are just like a like VMO mail order copper crimps, cheap as chips, but they come in handy for some things. Right, then you slide everything down on top of it, two beads, your swivel, get your other crimp down, and that's that part done. Right, so let's crimp that down. Tighten. Done. And that's it, that's the bottom part of the rig done. So you've got leg clip, copper crimp, bead, swivel, swivel, copper crimp, and that's all that's all ready to go now. So up to the top end now. So I'm gonna start at the top top of the rig now. Again, inch and a half to two inches down from the your link clip, which is gonna attach your rig to your main line. Crimp that in position. Sounds like I'm boring my dog at the moment. It's difficult to keep these flipping rig tying videos interesting, you know? I mean, obviously. The fiend is getting impatient. Right, so that's the that's that's what connects your rig to your main line, right? The crimp below that is now crimped down in place. Right, so slide everything up now. You've got your small bead, your bigger bead, your swivel, then your big bead, your little bead, your spring, and then that. And that other little bead and crimp now just to hold all that at the top. I'm gonna crimp that one down now. Right, and that's it, that's that's the rig that's the rig body done. So from the bottom to the top, again, and then there's the top part, have a good look at it, that's what yours should look like if you've done it all right. Right then, now for the hook links of the uh, of the loop rig, now you know I'll try and be as flipping, I'll try and be as informative but as quick as I can yeah look because it, I know it's boring like and this is a difficult one, like honestly it is. It's a pain in the backside to tie this rig. Right, so we're gonna tie this size 2-0 Camasan B940. I'm gonna tie it using, you've guessed it, 
the, the grinner. Anyway, there's the grinner, not all tied there. Right, then we're going to cut our hook links. We're just going to cut them long for now, right? So we've got plenty to play with, because like I said, you know, you can get this one wrong a few times before you get it there you want it, like. So anyway, we just cut cut it off where it is there. Basically the same length for the rig, which is miles, miles too long for the time being, but you'll see why in the end. Right, and we're going to tie that straight to the top of the rig. No, we're not going to tie straight to the top of the rig. <laughs> we're just going to tie that straight to the bottom of the rig. Because in a minute, this is going to have to be cut in half for us to incorporate this little thing. Which will hold the top hook. So now, that's not actually, believe it or not, the finished product, right? But I mean, it's just got everything in position for now, right? So what we do now, is we hook this onto our clip, right? Because this is all about precise measuring this rig, let me tell you. We could do it with Owen maybe stepping in here. I mean, you don't necessarily need another person all the time. But obviously where I haven't got it set up somewhere nice, I'm trying to do it for the camera. Just make it a bit easier. Right. Stop. Right, obviously this clip, when you incorporate it now, needs to be facing down here, look right. So if I just get the scissors, and I cut it just a tiny bit closer to the hook than I do, the rig body, so say about here. By the time you tie it, you're gonna lose a bit more line again. Look, so so anyway, that's that. Just get all that cut out of the way. Now on the bottom, yeah, right. Obviously, where I'm only using one hook, I'm gonna to wanna to put maybe a sequin to work as a bait stop or a bead, or maybe even both. Like, and I'll just trap the swivel and the bead. Uh, sorry, I just trapped the sequin and the bead by using a tiny little bit of uh, silicone tubing. Silicone tubing, just so you can see it. And I just crimp, cut a little tiny piece off. Look. That's fishing brothers is fishing friends. <laughs> Checking to see if we're out tonight. Any sequin will do, it's only working as a, you know, we're not using this to attract fish so much where we're fishing, we're just using it to uh, as a bait stop, like I said, to stop our bait sliding up the line when we cast. So anyway, slide the sequin down to the top of the hook. Like so. Just put a bead on just for good measure. There's absolutely no need whatsoever really, but I think it looks good on camera. <laughs> Obviously if you was fishing for place at Chazal or in the clear water, you know, you can get a little bit creative with the colours, you know, whatever, whatever you fancy. But anyway, I've slid the bit of silicone tubing on. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back through the other side of the silicone tubing and that's what holds it in place. Now because it's so small, this piece of silicone, you should be able to slide it up and down the line later on to suit the size of your bait. See that little loop? you think that was all untidy and all, but boom, look at that. And as you can see, it slides up and down the line, no problem. Genius, ain't I? Right, this is what we call a runaway clip because it just nearly fell off my table. So I tie, if you have a look at it now, this 
this little bait clip on here needs to be facing down towards the lead, yeah? So I tie the pad along with the hook on to the bottom pad. It looks pretty good to me. So that's that pad. It should look like a all I'm saying it should look like I will see if it fits at the end, but that's that. Right. Then that piece of line will be cut in half goes to the other pad. This pad that the swivel. Anyway, that's that there, look. Right now, if I've got it right, then when I clip this on your name. Oh my god, I tell you what, what a. Have you heard the word raw guy? See the way that. Let me just get this back in place so you can see everything. See the way that clip is facing down towards the lead? Obviously that is what's going to hold your next hook. And you'll see what the spring's all about now, about tension it like and keep it all locked down nice. So now, you need to get... your snood material back, or your trace material, whatever you want to call it. Tie a straight to your top swivel. Like so. Right. Here comes the uh, the pad name. See the way I just measured that then? By the time I've tied a... Hold that, oh. That's got to connect to there, look now, when I tie the arc on. Again, it's difficult to show on camera. Maybe one day if we ever see you out in a bed, you know, I might have a sit down. <laughs> if you're that interested. And you can, uh, you can have a look then. I've cut it a tiny bit long, look, because obviously where I put the silicone in, you know, and I have to go back through, that, that takes a flip in, that takes a little mill or two off the length. Yeah, look, just, just a shaving. Here she goes. Again, we're going to use another bead and a sequin as a bait stop again. Obviously this time, You've got to put this on first because you've already tied the top end. So slide your silicone on. And then back through the top of it this time. Almost pull it tight. But don't quite pull it tight yet. Then your bead. Then that. Nice and tight. Try not to break my swivel. Uh, try not to break my uh, seat win. Right, and that's basically the rig done. So that can slide down today. Now we just show it you all clipped up, and hopefully. Everything is was made the measure. Right, all right. Well, anyway, this is just a just a quick just a quick way to show you how it looks when it's clipped up. Basically, this is going to be hanging off your rod anyway, which makes it easy for you to clip up. So what we do, we get the top hook, and that's the little clip that we showed you earlier. Top hook goes into there and holds it, and then this goes down to your leg clip. And there you have it. And obviously when it hits the deck, 
and both of your snoods. Like over the tide. Fabulous with a little, you know, little worm beats with a little tip of the squid, you know. Obviously, just a good scratching rig all around. But you can tie it with whatever size hooks you want, however big you want, it's up to you.